What's up, world of YouTube? So I'm here again at uh, that same place that I'm always at. I have no life. Disneyland! In lieu of the wonderful holiday setting that they've set it up at, I'm gonna be filming a special everything you didn't even know you didn't even know of, whatever, about Disneyland. And it's gonna be Halloween themed, because my favorite holiday is Halloween. So this is gonna be titled Everything You Didn't Even Want to Know About Disneyland. We're gonna go over the hauntings, deaths, spooky happenings, and just other scary paraphernalia and stories. Those of you with weak dispositions should turn away now. There's not gonna be anything scary, scary. So like, I'm not gonna show you dead bodies, but you never know. So let's get started. Walt Disney always liked the strange and the scary, starting in 1929 with the very first Silly Symphony, which was Skeleton Dance. Uh, it was a cartoon short animation where skeletons in a graveyard got up and danced to music. In 1998, the very first death due not to guess negligence was on the Columbia, which is the pirate ship that goes around the rivers of America. And it was due to an employee who had been building the park's boat back from what it was. And instead of using normal rope to attach to the cleats of the boat, they used a nylon stretchy rope. And unfortunately, it pulled the cleat free from the boat and slipped back and killed a man. I believe injured his wife and then injured a cast member as well. One of the most very well-known deaths in the park took place on Big Thunder Railroad. So when the train entered a tunnel, the locomotive became derailed and jackknife flipping back onto the first cart. And as the rumor goes, it decapitated one of the, ca the guests in the train. That rumor was disproved though as he just was badly, badly injured and then died very shortly after getting injured. Did injure everybody else in the train as well as the whole train then became derailed as the story goes. So, Tomorrowland, the most deadliest place in the entire park, I have talked about previously in another video. Uh, you can totally click on that video here uh, if you want to see more. I, I've already talked about it so I'm not going to talk about them again. The only one I have not talked about is this one that's right here. This is the monorail, the most gruesome death in the entire park, you know, despite the other one, which was uh, the Big Thunder. But this was, as the cast members described, the most gruesome part, death in the entire park. During grad night, which is a thing that they do for like high school graduates, this guy wanted to sneak in even though he was not a graduate. And he got onto the monorail track to try to sneak into the park. He did not see that the monorail was coming, or he did see, he just didn't care. But security was trying to get him off, the monorail could not stop and hit him, dragging him several feet. According to the legend, the security had to hose and scrape him off the underside of the monorail because it was so disgusting. One of the hauntings that the cast members talk about is on Pirates of the Caribbean, there's a young boy who sits by himself. When the boat comes into dock, he's no longer sitting in the boat. This is probably because, as the cast members say, a mother had taken her son's ashes and dumped them in the water when she went on this ride one day. Apart from Tomorrowland, the second most deadliest section in the entire park is the Rivers of America. Four related deaths to this water. Two were a brother, a brother group that had decided to spend the night on the island. And then two more were adults that had been drinking and were on the island. And both of them were in the middle of the night deciding that they didn't want to stay on the island anymore because it was cold. So they tried to swim across. Unfortunately, the water is not that deep, but it is full of wires and, and rails. So they were caught on there and they drowned. The two brothers, according to the story, the younger brother was not a very good swimmer, so the older brother tried to carry him across, and the younger brother drowned and pushed the older brother under. And so the older brother did not make it. Creepy thing about that story as it goes is that they never found the body. However, the true story is that they could not find the body for an entire day because the filters had sucked it under. It's what I've heard. I don't know if it's true. Oops. People get me with strollers. So I asked earlier a cast member what was the most haunted place in the entire park and they told me that there is a kitchen below for the Blue Bayou and all these restaurants in this area. And she let me know that underneath in the kitchen there is a stock room with shelves and apparently there's a ghost down there that likes to knock the shelves over. And I'm not talking like little shelves, I'm talking like shelves. People will come in and they'll be moving and stuff and things will be falling off the shelves. Almost every day it happens. And it's not because of movement or anything, it's just because ghosts. So by far the spoopiest place in the entire park is the Haunted Mansion. The Haunted Mansion was designed to be a very scary walkthrough, but they changed it to what it is today and the little doom buggies that you get into and then it drives you around through the entire house. On a visit to the UK, Walt told many reporters that he was looking for ghosts that lived in castles and country manor homes, but only ghosts who were hoping to continue their passion of haunting in a different location. He would call it a retirement home for the ghosts. The house itself, the architecture, was inspired by the Evergreen House in Baltimore, Maryland with 
48 rooms. It's currently a public museum that people can walk through. One of the previous uh, videos that I've done has touched on the factoids of the background stories for the Haunted Mansion. And one of the stories is that there is a sea captain his name was Captain Gorlu, or Gideon Gorlu was his full name, Captain Gore for short. And then this was his house. You can see because there is a weather man up there is a ship. So the mansion was called Gore Manor uh, due to his bloodthirsty reputation. Another name that he was sometimes given was Bartholomew Gore. The original walkthrough was going to be like department store windows where you would stop and then they would become illuminated and the scene would play out and then you'd move on. The department store window walkthrough idea was nixed due to poor uh, receiving end on the castle walkthrough. People didn't like the castle walkthrough as much as they had hoped so Walt kind of just was like, eh, we're not going to do a walkthrough anymore, we're going to make this a ride instead of a walkthrough. You would be given the tour by a host or butler. They were the descendants of Captain Gore's butler. So there's several original stories for this. One of them is that Captain Gore's wife Priscilla was killed by Captain Captain Gore himself after she found out that he was the notorious Captain Gore just couldn't deal with it and so he killed her because she was gonna go tell on. Another is that instead of just killing her outright he threw her body in a well which would have been on the premise and if you had walked through the well or by the well you would have heard her crying out of the well. Another thing that you can see inspiration from was that they were gonna have her bricked up. He was going to brick her up in the house so you would hear her screaming and crying behind the brick wall. Either way somehow Captain Gore killed her and he was so tormented by the the fact that he had taken his true love's life. He hung himself in the rafters of his home and you can still hear him and her, according to the, the original story, um, crying and wailing through the house. Another story that they were thinking about when they were writing the original script was that this was going to be called the Bloodmere Manor and it was originally placed here before the park was even here and Disney was going to move the mansion out of the park, the whole thing. They were going to pick it up and move it but unfortunately the spirits were pranking them and were and allowing them to move the entire mansion as they wanted it to stay here so they could live in it. And when they were still rewriting the story, there was an idea that they were going to have a headless horseman party where all of the headless horseman's friends were going to come, like a wedding party, and they were going to have a giant party of food and like fun and stuff, which they still kind of use that storyline in the end in the graveyard scene, which is where they wanted it to be. Due to three years of them waiting for them to open this ride, they had it built and set up in the entire park, but they hadn't had it open to the public. There were a bunch of different stories and like lore going around about why they had not opened it to the public. One very popular one was that they had opened it and somebody was so scared that they actually died on the ride. So that wasn't true, but Disney decided to perpetrate that by telling people that yes, it was so scary somebody had died. You know, a construction worker had died because it's actually haunted that when they were building it, someone had actually passed away. Um, I don't believe anybody has actually died on this ride, though it is the number one place for people to drop remains of their loved ones. However, please do not do that because if you do, they have an entire thing that they have to go through, like a, like a biohazard thing, and they close the ride for a good amount of time and then guests are unfortunately allowed to go on it. So it's very bad, so don't do that. Mark Davis and Claude Coates designed the feel of the mansion. Mark Davis did the spooky uh, like characters that were funny but also a little spooky. Claude Coates really focused on the atmosphere. He wanted it to feel intimidating and scary. So the story was being written by them and then they changed it because they didn't want to have an official storyline for the Haunted Mansion. They wanted people to kind of just figure out whatever they wanted the story to be. So the stretching room, which is the elevator that takes you down there, it takes you underground 15 feet and it takes you under the railroad tracks and under the berm so that the entire ride is basically back there. In the 1980s when the ride had already been open a few years they wanted to bring some pizzazz and life to this because you know it's dead inside and so what they did was they would have people dressed up in suits of armor and they would jump out at random intervals to scare the guests in the ride. This unfortunately was a bad decision because guests would punch or hit the suits of armor due to fear. The effects and the little jumpy thingies that scare you and like audio animatronics were designed by Raleigh Crump and Yale Gracie. As rumor goes, when they were designing and building these spooky haunting things, the janitors were afraid to go into their, their workroom and they asked them to leave the lights on so that when they had to clean in there, they would be able to see everything. Just, you know, being awful people, Raleigh Crump and Yale Gracie would not leave the lights on and they would set booby traps specifically so that when the janitors would go in, it would like set off and they would jump out and scare the janitors so the room never got cleaned. Arguably the scariest place in the entire park is at the Small World because of those weird little audio animatronic little children and their song that they repeat over and over and over again. It is also one of the most haunted places in the entire park. According to cast members, when they close the entire ride down at night, after the song stops playing, after the boats have stopped moving, the audio animatronics will sometimes move by their own accord. And this could be a malfunction in the wiring or something, or it could be 
unruly spirits. In 1964, the very first death that Disneyland had experienced occurred on this ride. There was a little kid who undid his seatbelt and fell out of the car and then apparently fell to his death or either was crushed. I don't know which one it was. Another death that occurred on this ride, there was a woman named Dolly, supposedly, allegedly, and she turned around to look at her children because apparently they were squabbling, and she turned around and stood up at the same time and got hit coming into a cave and was pushed out of the vehicle and landed on the tracks and then was hit and dragged by the next car. And people say that they still see and hear her crying in, the, in this ride. If all these stories and like lore and stuff interest you, I'd recommend watching you know, this video right here. It's called Missing in the Mansion. It is amazing. It's a fan-made video about hauntings in the park and it's perfect. The lamp lit in the fire department uh, in Disneyland. I believe I've talked about it in the past, but the story behind it is they lit it shortly after Walt's death so that people would remember that Walt was the reason that this park was built. And they used to blow it out every night until one cast member was blowing it out and then she got down here after blowing it out and noticed that it was lit again and she's like that's really weird so she went up to blow it out again and the second time she blew it out she heard someone whispering remember I am always here and so that's why they don't blow it out ever so another haunting before this part was California Adventure it was actually the parking lot unfortunately there was a little girl who was hit by a tram because she was too short and she ran out in front of the tram and it hit her and killed her People have said that they've seen a young girl running around this area and then she runs through walls. The number one place where people see her is the Muppet Theater. So all of the items in the Tower of Terror viewing room were in a episode of the Twilight Zone. Uh, so you can see different like items along the shelves. They each should have been in an episode of Twilight Zone. Okay, so that's the end of my Disney fact video for Halloween. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had fun making it. Halloween's my favorite holiday. Haunted Mansion's my favorite ride. I get to talk a lot about it. It's some good times. Uh, until next time, uh, that's about it. Bye! You just watch Lazar and Dink, leave a comment and tell me what you think. If you seem to like my groove, hit subscribe and improve your mood.